One of the things that it, I found rather shocking or surprising about these teachings about these second coming of these Nephilim creatures is that uh, some of these men have engaged in something that's usually not considered uh, kosher, at least in the um, eschatology crowd, and that is they actually engaged in some date setting. Would you like to address that? In fact, that was one of the first articles in this whole nightmare that, that we documented. It was called Doomsday Date Setters 2012, and there were a lot of different things that were merging together at that period of time, mm -hmm. but the main uh, ideas coming out of the Mayan culture was the end of the Mayan calendar and uh, the fact that it, December 21st, 2012, the world as we know it would end. And so all of these authors jumped onto the bandwagon. Uh, Tom Horn wrote a Pauline Rising 2012. Then of course there was the Nephilim Stargates 2012 and some others. Um, and they were all warning us that, you know, the end is near. Uh, the world as we know it will end. Even though, I think it was just prior to that, that the Harold Camping false that date is setting true, yeah. was taking place. But nonetheless, they continued to uh, speculate uh, all the scenarios going along with the end of the world, uh, how it might happen, what could happen. Uh, there was kind of a hysteria going on at that time, and, and people will remember, uh, just tuning on TV, it was on the national news. Uh, is the world really going to end? And rather than have a solid... Christian message for the people that were really fearful about mm -hmm. the world ending. There's no hope in Christ. Uh, instead, they were tuned into, you know, uh, the Nephilim coming back, and yes, you know what, the Mayans might be on to something. And were some of them talking about the return of Quetzalcoatl, the Mayan god? <clears throat> there, there was the Teutonic god and the Mayan god. One was Kukulkan. I can never say that right. Yes. And the other was Quetzalcoatl or Quetzalcoatl, however you yes. pronounce it. And uh, in fact, it was such a, a belief uh, in many of these men, especially uh, men like L.A. Marzulli, uh, Russ Dizdar, mm -hmm. Richard Grund, uh, they decided that they were going to go to the Mayan periods to pyramids. be pyramids, yeah. Yeah. to be at the site because they consider that a power place. And actually all of the New Agers were gathered there Absolutely. on that date expectantly awaiting this great event to happen. Because they believe that among other things that when the galactic alignment was going to occur on December 21st, 2012, that somehow this ancient god Quetzalcoatl was going to manifest himself. So L.A. Marzulli actually had a, about a, a five minute blog posting requesting funds from his flock, saying that he wanted to go there and engage in some of this militant warfare in case... Against this god that was returning. In case he were to okay. manifest. Uh, that didn't happen. The mission was aborted. Um, L.A. Marzulli's daughter had a prophetic dream which said that he shouldn't go. So in effect, it, they didn't go. And Quetzalcoatl did not materialize. So it was, it was a no-show. The money that was spent for that, and it was a hoax, it, it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. It was false date setting, it was false prophecy. Yes. Nonetheless, that should be uh, pretty obvious that there, you know, false date setting, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So why would we even believe anything else that would be printed or written about some of these coming end time fearful things? Yes, so uh, do they have another date now? Then, because that's what most of the date setters have historically done. Uh, they set another new date when their old date doesn't happen. Tom Horn has done this very cleverly. His, his book, his main book, before all of this uh, doomsday 2012 mayhem actually got so out of control, mm -hmm. his book, Apollyon Rising 2012, was the book that had laid everything out. I mean, and he used everything from uh, Freemasonry, uh, astrology, uh, hidden secret codes, hidden secret and, codes and documents. The, uh, and, yes. the seal on the on the United States Great Seal had some embedded information. All of that he threw all that together in Apollyon Rising 2012. Well, when the god Apollo, who is also Quetzalcoatl, that's mm -hmm. and he's also Osiris. He's also Nimrod. That's what they claim. Yes, Hiram Abiff from from the Masons. Yes. When he didn't, didn't appear, what, what Horn did was he revamped and repackaged the whole book. 
and now it's called Zenith 2016. And I have both books. And the only difference in the book was in chapter 2012. And in chapter 2012, he adds in the blood moon hysteria. What is blood moon? Blood moon are the, the times of the blood moon, the tetrads, uh, that somehow they're going to signal the tribulation time. And in fact, I think today as we're taping this, this is the evening of one of the first blood moons. Okay, so the, what's the new, the new date? 2016? 2016. Okay, date setting. Date setting. 